So this is a new expanded table of the autonomic nervous system that's also reproduced as a color uh, fold out in the Body Remembers Volume 2. And Chapter 2 in the Body Remembers Volume 2 uh, details this table and how it came to be and how to use it um, in fairly technical detail, hopefully very accessible. I came to producing this six column ANS table in an attempt to approve, improve upon the two column one that we've had for decades and decades. Just being able to distinguish between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system has proved to be inadequate both in teaching about autonomic, autonomic hyperarousal and in trying to uh, track arousal in clients. And so I started by expanding it to three columns, then it went to four columns, and then it went to six columns. I suspect it could have more. I'm sure it can be improved upon. Um, but as Antonio Damasio says in Descartes' Error, in science we use the best approximations we have until better ones come along. And so this is my best approximation of representing the autonomic nervous system that I had at the time we went to press for the Body Remembers Volume 2. Um, so you'll see that there's six columns with um, graduating degrees of arousal from the left to the right. Um, I've color coded it, which has been useful for clinicians and clients alike. I started out with the four center columns, the green, the blue, the orange, and the red, and I stole those colors from the US and UK alert systems for terrorism. Um, if you look online at their terrorism charts, you know, the severe, the impending, or whatever, they use those colors, and I thought it was appropriate um, to liken the, these degrees of distress. One of the things I did that I thought was important to do was distinguish between states that most people most of the time with normally regulated nervous systems hang out in, and that's the blue and the green, and that's why I have a little arrow across here that says normal life. And off to the right here, the orange, the red, and the purple are the states of extreme arousal that have to do with reactions to threats to life or bodily integrity. Um, and across that, it, um, it says threat to life in that arrow. Off to the left here is a yellow column that represents lethargy, which is a very low arousal state and sort of um, a state for itself. And I put that in there because I've seen in the trauma field what I believe is a confusion between the low arousal, what they call hypoarousal, of an extreme trauma response where the person collapses, may faint, which I've represented over here in the purple. It has to do with overstimulation, overstress, and a state of what I'm calling lethargy that has to do with, with just not having enough energy, not being able to engage in life and may be um, caused by depression or um, bereavement, or some of my colleagues have started um, speculating that the lethargy column, the lethargy response, may have more to do with neglect as the um, hypoarousal uh, of the trauma state looks very different. So that's why I've come to, to distinguish those. In general, I wrote this, I created this chart for two reasons. One is for clinicians to use with their clients and to be able to track the client's arousal during a session, help teach the client about tracking their own arousal so that they can, as much as possible, come back to hang out in the blue and the green. And, um, but I also created this chart for the clinician to be able to monitor their own arousal for a greater degree of self-care and a possibility to um, prevent vicarious trauma and compassion fatigue. So just let me briefly say what the columns are from left to right. So there's the yellow, there's the lethargic. The green is a state of calm. The blue is active alert. 
so, and we need a certain amount of alertness to be able to manage things, to be able to do your job, catch the bus, um, deal with conflicts in daily life, that kind of thing. It's not an extreme arousal, it's just something we do generally. A lot of people artificially induce that active alert state with a cup of coffee or a bar of chocolate, you know, kind of thing to be able to keep on track, meet a deadline, deal with their kids, you know, etc. These orange, red, and purple states, the fight, flight, hyperfreeze, and hypofreeze, they're special states that have to do with threat to life. Um, most of us hang out in the calm and active alert, going back and forth throughout a normal day. We don't get into the red, the orange, or the purple um, unless we're in a specialized situation where we're witnessing a car accident or being pursued by somebody on the street or accosted or running from a tsunami or you know, facing some kind of actual violence or physical injury. Um, oh, so, and I wanted to show you that when you're working with your clients or even for yourself, you can track with a dry marker. This chart is reproduced with a, as a laminated card so it, you can see it's shiny and it's hard. And then you can write on it just like you would write on a whiteboard and track your client. So maybe your client comes in and they're in the hyper freeze state. They're really activated. Their heart beats really high. And you start calming them down by asking them to pay attention where they are into the environment. What are they seeing right now? Um, uh, can they feel their feet on the floor? Can they um, count the tiles in the ceiling so that they anchor in the here and now and see that their arousal comes down more toward the active alert? And you can track their arousal through the session like that and show them where they are. And then after the session, you can just erase it off like you would off of a whiteboard and be ready for the, for the next client. Clients like this a lot. I've had people tell me, I've had them come up to me in, in lectures and stuff and say, I used to hang out really a lot in the orange and the red and using this chart, I've been able to target bringing my arousal down consciously more toward the, the green and the blue and they really like talking about the colors rather than the clinical terms.